この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディー、ウェルカムエブリワン、アイムティアブーアンアイムヒアフォーユーユーハクショー、エピソード72and maybe 73, I, I don't know, last week we only ended up watching one episode because it was a goddamn fucking awesome episode and it deserved to be talked about some more.、Um, also, some people in my Discord and some people in the comments uncovered some of the mysteries surrounding the staff on that episode. Turned out there were a bunch of Gynax staff uncredited as、uh, animators on the episode, and it turns out that the animators Director whose name just escaped my mind. Give me a second here. Please, one second. <laughs> one moment, please.、Uh, Yoshinori Tokia.、Uh, turns out that Yoshinori Tokia was a key animator on multiple episodes of Gosenzo Sama Ban Banzai, that thing that I said was definitely referenced in the episode. And after conferring with some other Sakaga heads, yeah, 100%, 100% like completely some fully ripped scenes. And I love it. I love it. To be clear, not saying that's a bad thing. What's the Picasso quote? Oh, shit. Give me a sec. Okay, it's really simple.、Uh, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Or bad artists copy, great artists steal. There are a, a bunch of different variations of this quote. I'm not sure who they're supposed to be. Also, it was, it's a misattribution because it wasn't actually by Picasso and Steve Jobs said it wrong or something. F- fucking whatever. The point remains. There is greatness in theft, at least when it comes to art, at least when it's not plagiarized. When you take interesting things from another piece of media that were created by other creators and go, like, oh, that fits for this thing. That's cool, man. That's super dope.、Uh, and it worked super well in the previous episode, and there was a bunch of other stuff in the previous episode. Tons of exposition, all of it done really deftly and, like, well.、Uh, I really liked the previous episode. It was really good. And it did a great job of setting up, like, Broad goals for this arc, I think, at least for the start. And those goals mostly come down to reconnaissance,、uh, gather information about the enemy and don't go in blind. And we use the entire sequence of fighting the territory squad and taking losses during doing so. We, I mean, we effectively like lose a. But, Lose some people.、Uh, as a good representation of why we should know what our, our opponents' weaknesses and strengths are before we go and just run in gung ho willy nilly and attack them.、Uh, this ain't no tournament where we might not know our enemies' uh, uh, stuff. We can observe and we can be smart about this, and that's super cool. So. I guess that's what we're going to start doing. I don't know what form that will take, whether that just means like policing the streets and like walking a beat and looking for insects or something, or if,、um, if like Sensui is going to start sending mini villains after us、uh, to start like indicating to us that maybe there's something bigger going on that we should start following these leads to. I don't know, but it's time to do some actual spirit detective work, which I think is really cool. Because we've never really done that much spirit detective work. Okay, the first, in the first like 30 episodes, there's some spirit detective work that we do. But most of it consists of Koenma gives us a mission, we do the mission. There's very little what's happening. We've got to figure out the mystery. We've got to figure out who's responsible, sort of situation. And so I would love to get a little bit more of that in a show nominally about a spirit detective. Because that seems cool. I also want more Yu Yu Hakusho stuff, and whatever form that takes, I'm probably going to be happy with it. I'm also curious how we're going to resolve this Hiei conflict. I'm still going to put my eggs in the Yukina gets captured basket because that's super simple and really straightforward. Maybe Togashi will be, do more with it. I, I don't know. Regardless, we've got Sensui, who I want to step back for a second and just say, This villain, though,、uh, first lines that we've ever heard from him are immediately deeply fascinating. And I am super intrigued by his goals, motivations, reasons, history, everything. And since he seems to be our main villain, it seems like we're going to get a ton of that. So I'm looking forward to it. Also, he's being manipulated by Elder Toguro. And I'm putting air quotes around that because I don't know if Elder Toguro is like capable. I don't, I don't think Elder Toguro is as smart as Elder Toguro thinks he is. And this is just the impression that I have right now of this kid, or this kid, of this guy who actively taunted his en- enraged、uh, uh, younger brother over the, the woman that his younger brother loved and still had feelings for. So, like, I don't think Elder Toguro has the, the insight necessary to understand people's motivations and then use them against them. Like, to effectively manipulate people, you have to be charismatic.、Um, and yes, I'm going to use DD term, sorry. You have to be charismatic enough to convince them to do what you want. 
which Elder Togoro may very well be. You have to be intelligent enough to actually come up with a plan, which Elder Togoro might be. But you also have to be insightful enough to understand what those characters themselves want and how you can line that up with, like, your goals. And I don't know if Elder Togoro has that. Again, he got he got exploded by his younger brother because he taunted him about something that he should have realized was important to Togoro. But we'll see. Um, I would not be surprised if we get a situation where it's like, haha, no, says Sensui. Elder Togoro, you thought you were using me, but I was using you. That kind of a situation might make sense. Anyway, I'm going off the rails. I want Yu Yu Hakusho, and so do you. So let's watch some Yu Yu Hakusho and stop blathering and start watching. I've got episode 72 of Yu Yu Hakusho up and ready to go. It's sitting at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction. Picture-in-picture -picture version with the video up there, available in the description down there. Timer-based version up on YouTube, and if you would like to do a syncy thing and sync up your own copy of this episode with the timer-based version, you are welcome to do so. Just get your copy ready because the beep-beep timer to count you down will be coming at you right now. Solid. Solid, solid, solid. Boom! Sick. I don't know what that says. I kind of wish I knew what that said, but I, I kind of don't, right? <sighs> Is that different clothing on Genkai? Oh boy, that's a lot of bugs. So, don't need to go searching for bugs, do we? Fuck. Well, I can't see them. Yeah. Yes, Genkai. As you say, Genkai. Squad, 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 squad. But where? We do have the two smarty pants on the same squad. At least we split up Kuobara and Yusuke. Dun dun dun. I always feel like somebody's watching me. I can't sing, so sorry. Watching me. I love this track. Yeah, true, true, true. Uh, maybe. You will. Bum bum. 
Hello, hooded figure in the grass. Spooky, spooky. Shit. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. What? Yeah, the whole the whole world spun. Hmm. Doubt it. Which one? Which lesson? Running in without a plan? All right. Hello. Uh, wait, no. The one sitting alone. That that is not even close to a needle in a haystack. Hay bales have thousands of strands of hay. Oh, hello. Well, I wonder. How did you know we were thinking? He's a psychic. And this is his territory. <laughs> you don't, though. This place is pretty empty. Okay. He is psychic. He doesn't know shit about shit. He knows shit about shit. I take back what I said. He doesn't. He just read it from your minds. He doesn't know shit. Got it. Got it. Yep. Fair, but I think this is what it says on the tin. He totally could. Two squad leaders. I don't need to. Oh, he does need to. Territory versus territory. Can you do that in somebody else's territory? It won't. Oh, no, it will work. Okay. He can see through your moves, dude. He can see through all your moves. Clonk. Oh, multi-clonk. Jesus. Ultra mega multi-clonk. So is he... Is he just like what's his face from Watchmen where he just sees shit coming? Totes. Does he have some level of control over them or no, he doesn't. People are just e exiting. Hey man, we don't actually have any beef. Oh. Can have a real trouble once you. <laughs> I don't think he's on one. I think he's on self side. Hell no. No. Okay, we're, we'll leave. Uh, Yusuke? Sort of. He's going to get clocked. 
Oh. Yusuke, you're gonna get fucking clocked. Is she gonna play mind games with him? Yeah, we have to see what he sees to understand the trick. Can it be tricked, though? But he won't stop short. Is he just flooding his mind with one thought? I assume so. He's gonna punch him and strain the face. Nope, he did what he said he would do. And also some spirit wave. Okay, I see. The fuck was that? We're using percent now. That's pretty creepy, but okay. We we need to investigate, so it's fine. This is super detective shit, though, which is what I said I wanted, so... Fuck yeah. Uh... We just, just beat him up for no reason. He doesn't want to. He wants to be a boxer. Take the weak. Take the weak. <laughs> Hello, George. Fucking George. <laughs> no. No. He called him Karama. Smart. He's calling everybody by name now. Motherfucker. It's just Koenma trying to be a better leader. Says it again. All right, George, say what you need to say. Yep. Shut up, ogre. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. What the fuck? It's so cruel. Oh, is he just still? No, okay. Hard when you've got a shape changer. Jesus. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad. I'm pretty sure I've seen a show where somebody is driven fucking bullshit crazy by a similar ability. Oh, it's Mai from Code Geass. Totally gets wrecked by this ability. That is deeply useful. Ba -ding! It's the, the the fuck a child? Oh, okay, she's really cute. Got it. So am I. <laughs> uh huh. Great way of sitting down. Sure, yeah, sure. But why would somebody with a territory be moving around? I suppose they'd have to, like, go to work or whatever.
Uh-oh. Strong. That's not Sensui, is it? I don't think so. No, the nose is wrong. <laughs> so hard on this guy. Just point. Okay, don't point. Don't point. It is said sweet. Oh no. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Oh shit. Oh, fully, oh shit. Oh, fully fucking bullshit. Fuck. <sighs> You're the fucking coolest. He's so cool. Did he just assassinate him? He just fucking killed him with his brain? What just happened? He just exploded his head with his mind. And he's gone! What's that what it was? That's very familiar. Effectively a rubber bullet. Huh. Are you guys just wandering around Mushiori City solo? <laughs> Chill, princess. The blue wonder. God, she's just a gold mine. Yeah. They're also swarming all over you. Stick together. Jesus. Oh, hello. Sniper? Seaman? Doctor? What the fuck are code names? So it's not Yukina. Writing things down. Writing things down. Writing things down. I missed one. Sick.
but also potentially their professions and what they're involved in. This is so jojo -Z. It's so jojo -Z. Dangerous how? Compassion? Ooh. Totally. That was just strength. Or did Sniper throw it? Sniper did. The angle was wrong. Sniper! Oh. And then changed its velocity. Brrr. Whoa. I mean, that's just looped, but that's super sick. Bye, buddy. Go boxing. Get, get the fuck out of here. Doctor? One could assume. Hello, doctor. I love it. Oh, what a shot. That's that's pretty freaking cool. Oh. Where do we even begin with this freaking episode? It's so cool. It's so cool. I mean, okay, there are obvious and intentional, I would say. Probably, I mean, I don't know Togashi's intent necessarily, but I, I think they're intentional. There are parallels. There's there's this meeting on the street in public between our, our protagonist and our antagonist, seeing each other, gauging each other's abilities a little bit. The difference is, well, I guess it's not even a difference. It is about the same. When Toguro did that to Yusuke, he, he challenged him, but he had a plan in play regardless, right? He had a, a thing to say afterward that was like, you're going to be part of the Dark Tournament or I kill you and all your friends. Something like that, right? And then Sensui already has his plan ongoing. He's not involving the heroes in this, like, for fun. At least I don't think so. Uh, unless, unless we'll reveal that there's, like, something, something more personal. Like, Toguro had this thing with Genkai, right? And so, so he challenged Genkai's new disciple. That makes sense. Um, if there's something like that for Sensui, then that would make sense, too. But... The impression that I get is that Sensui is just such a good planner that, like, he knows that... We, we heard this in the previous episode. Like, they are aware of this group. Elder Toguro has been telling them, like, this is a serious threat, and Sensui is not ignoring him. He is putting plans into play to trick this group, to trap them, to get them to chase him seemed to be the, the, the intent here for this encounter, and it didn't play out as planned, but it doesn't matter because wherever they end up, they're going to be facing one of Sensui's goons. And that they're not goons if they're all on the same level or similar as motherfucking Sniper, who just took a pencil eraser from 300 yards away and flicked it into a dude's forehead. 
Now, I, I want to take a step back and just mention that the the whole like telekinetically throwing a small object at somebody really fast is also a thing that was the the like practically the epitome of elder of, of younger Toguro. Um, like when he went full bore hyper powered, one of the things that he did was like machine gun pebbles, right? That was one of the main things that he did. After that, it was a lot of like you shoot a gigantic spirit gun at me, I take it and I come back at you and I shoot more pebbles at you. Now we've got a character who's just like, yeah, my normal state is shooting pebbles at 7 billion miles an hour. Ha 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 ha. Ooh, we got power up. We got definite power up. That's so fucking, fucking cool. Okay. Um, um, but that's where we're starting. That's where we're starting. But the whole point of this was to tempt Yusuke into rushing after him, right? That's what we get from that conversation on the rooftop with uh, Sniper. Yusuke didn't follow you as planned. Oh, that's fine. There are other plans. There are always contingencies. Ugh. Oh, this... Sensui's gonna have so many Xanatos gambits. He's gonna have so many. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait for for the, like, ah, you defeated my, my, my minion, but guess what? It was all part of my plan. I can't wait. Um, because I, I, I don't think it'll be that, like that sort of shoddy writing which sometimes the xanatos gambit seems to be but like it, if you can make it work you can make that shit awesome you can make it so cool um and i'm excited i'm excited so so we've got a villain who is not only like not only has a plan for us which is trap us kill us whatever i think but maybe more than that he also needs one of us to be a psychic to break that barrier and cut that barrier and so i have to step back from my previous my previous guess which was they grab yukina because she's definitely a psychic and stuff and it's it's definitely not gonna be that it's cool uh because he has the the psychic energy sense which we've been very clear about mentioning that he does not have access to right now and also he has a sword which maybe can cut a barrier thing ta-da it's cool bara cool 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 um, oh, this episode is so cool. So we split our squads, giving us different, completely separate group dynamics, which is fantastic. Uh, great to see our characters interact with different people. Doesn't change a ton of stuff yet, but um, there is some definite, like, there's some chemistry in terms of the way the characters interact between, uh, uh, like, Yanagi Sawa is kind of, uh, uh, takes the backstage and just chills mostly, but between Kido and Yusuke, both of whom are kind of like leaders of their own sort of squads of, of miscreants kind of. Uh, they sort of they sort of have different ways of going about things, but end up complementing each other really well, um, and that's that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so they find the place. Uh, we also see a similar sort of chemistry between um, uh, 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 Kurama and um, Kaito. God, we got too many names now. There are too many names. We uh, black hair guy, red hair. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I just need to remember their names. And they're being watched. Ooh, spooky, spooky, spooky. Also bugs. Uh, spooky, spooky. Bugs, bugs. Let me get. I gotta say, I don't, I don't dislike this little like we're walking down the street and then the world changes color and flips upside down. It's it's very in its intent. And to an extent, in its style, it's very similar to the JoJo's color swap or the palette swap, um, something that does not exist in the manga of JoJo's, except in that Araki draws his characters in different colors on every cover because he fucking wants to. Uh, uh, but like a JoJo's character in anime walks into a place and there's something weird and 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 standy going on, and boom, everything's pink or everything's blue or everything's blue on pink or like some weird color. Uh, that vibe is very much there, as is this whole territory situation where like we walk into a place, we find a random guy. Is he an enemy? Is he a friend? Is he an enemy stand? Is it just a stand user that exists? It's kind of very similar. And that... Uh, want to be take a step back and say i'm not saying that that togashi's ripping anything from jojo's and vice versa it, it doesn't matter this is only comparative analysis and that that is not necessarily the best kind of analysis but this is saying there's this thing that i really like about jojo's which is the variety of different combats and beyond that not just combats but encounters of different kinds like you walk into one place and and there's a a, a chef who has 
powers, obviously, and is obviously a stand user, but like, is he an enemy? Is he a friend? What's his deal? And you don't know until you find out, and we get to watch an episode of that encounter unfolding, and that's really interesting and fun. It shows us our characters in different lights and against different types of enemies, and that's fucking the point, right? That's like the cool thing that is cool. So they walk into this this downstairs bar they look around like, who's the enemy? We know there's one here. Who is it? Who is it? And he gets up and is like, ah, looking for me? Yes, apparently we are. What's his powers? It's obviously mind reading. But what if he's tricking us? What if it's not that and he's trying to trick us somehow? Okay, then let's find out. Let's test it. Boom, jump on the shadow. He knew it was the shadow. He punched the fuck out of me. It's mind reading. Great. Now, how are we going to defeat him? If Yusuke just tries to punch him, he's going he's gonna to fail. So he excludes some information. I was wondering what he was doing. There are classic gambits to use against, like, people who can read your mind. Um, generally, they don't work. Like, uh, I flood my mind with, I'm going to throw a left hook. I'm going to throw a left hook. I'm going to throw a left hook. The mind reader still sees through that and sees, like, oh, you're going to throw a right straight. Um, cool. I, I'll dodge the right straight. But there are there are gambits available. In this case, he just excludes a piece of information, which you, you could argue is like not possible, um, because how can Yusuke think? How, how can he ideate that he's going to throw a hook and then blast him with spirit energy without this guy immediately figuring out? Oh, he has spirit energy. He's going to blast me with it. Eh, it falls apart on a closer inspection, but that's okay. It works dramatically in the moment, and it's okay if we have the fuck. What's it called? It's is it Orwell? Or Orson Welles. Or H.G. Wells. Or Orson Scott Card. I don't remember. There's a, uh, I, I think it's Orson Welles. Um, it's a, a filmmaker who made a, a, there's a quote about having like a refrigerator moment. Um, refrigerator moment film. Fridge logic. Yes. Uh, or hit oh it's it's Hitchcock I should have said Hitchcock uh, because obviously um, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. he called a certain scene an icebox scene a scene that only hits you after you've gone home and started pulling cold chicken out of the icebox so there are a couple of different like meanings of of uh, uh, of, of icebox scenes. Some of them are like, oh, I get it finally, as you go, go to the other, th that thing. Um, but, but on the commentary track for Hot Fuzz, uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost talk about a similar situation and they call it popcorn logic, which is it's five minutes after the movie has ended. You're walking out of the theater, finishing off the last bits of your popcorn. And wait a second, that plot point didn't make any sense. But guess what? It was really cool in the moment and it didn't matter whether it made sense in the moment. So it's fine. Right? This feels like popcorn logic to me, where it's like, okay, maybe, maybe Yusuke couldn't have thought that thing, and this guy couldn't have, like, blah, 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 blah. But it was a really cool way to resolve the situation, and credit to Takashi for coming up with a cool thing. I didn't see that coming, uh, because in my mind, I was like, he ideates Spirit Wave or some level of his power coming out of him and blasts him. Unless, are we, is the implication that it's just the movement of his fist? That that is powerful enough to create an air blast that knocks Morita Morota backward. Is that what we're saying here? Because if so, I take back everything that I said, and that's fucking awesome. That's just plain fucking awesome and smart as hell from Yusuke. Because then he does not need to ideate either like my punch is powerful enough to blast you with air, or to ideate like I will then blast you with spirit energy from afar. He just needs to do exactly what he's saying he will do, which is fully throw a right hook and stop short, the blast of which causes a blast of wind that knocks you back, or power, or whatever. I'm going to choose to read it that way now. I, I take back everything that I previously said about this. This is just dope as fuck. Awesome. Uh, this is a super cool scene. Getting to see a mind reader at work is great. Uh, and we also then transform into him, which is super creepy to me. This little moment of nightmare, it's all a nightmare. Super goofy. Heartbreaking sequence with Ogre here, who we just found out is named George and is really happy about that. And Koenma very particularly calls multiple other people by name. Fucking little baby asshole baby asshole we gotta be really clear about the emphasis of baby asshole he is an asshole who is a baby not the asshole of a baby very important distinction uh poor george i'm so sorry george okay so 
poor guy also has to deal with hearing the thoughts of everybody. Nice little gag around hearing a, a dirty thought from a young girl. We don't comment at all on the fact that an obviously high school student is going to go make out with her teacher. Okay. Uh, and then we hear this shit. Talk about an interesting way to reveal something about our antagonist, right? How long was it before before we knew that Sakyo had was was like twisted, right? Because we see Sakyo's actions a bunch for a long time up through the entire arc, and everything that he does seems pragmatic. Everything that he does seems like there's a justification for it in in world that's like it gains him money, it gains him power, it gives him like a better bet, it's fun, it's interesting to him, yada yada. And then we get this reveal that's like, I murdered pets, I'm a fucking sociopath, I'm a, I'm, I'm a psychopathic killer who enjoys hurting things. And that's just a reveal, right? This character, this character has his surface perfect. Right? His surface is perfect, but his insides are twisted up. And we don't find that out 20 episodes after meeting him. We find it out in his, pretty much his second appearance. His second real, like, in episode, I'm not just a cameo to show you what may be coming in the future sort of appearance. We find out that this, I'm going to kill them all, all the women, all the children, I'm going to kill them all, kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. That is already here it's already this character and it is his core and he keeps it wrapped up real tight only a mind reader could tell oh, what the fuck so this leads him to fully freak out at which point we start looking around and i i didn't i didn't think that voice was sensui now, maybe that I just should have attuned my ears better to his voice, right? In black, his hair slipped back. And he stops, and everybody turns to look at him. And he is already turning to look at you. He knows you are here and is making himself known. This is a warning. Hi. Blam. And... Let's take a step back from the actual really cool thing that happened here, which is that it was a trick, well-orchestrated plot to get Yusuke to recklessly chase after Sensui, right? And just go, the impact of this moment. You're sitting around, there's a psychic who perceives something, and he gets his head fucking exploded by a dude just looking at you. He's just looking at you and he exploded that dude's head. We don't have any reason to believe that there's a sniper here. We don't know that there's a guy named Sniper yet. So since we just caused a dude's head to explode by looking at him and turning his chin up a little bit to look down on him. You want to build up a villain? Take notes! Because I'm taking notes! I, I really, I am actually taking notes on this guy because, again, like... There's a, a villain in my game who's maybe not quite psychotic, but is very competent and very calm. Uh, and I'm taking notes. Fully taking notes. I'm also realizing that if this villain meets with my party at any point, he's going to have some fucking snipers. Uh, and they might, they might present a message of some kind. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Yeah. I can, oh man, I can just imagine. I can imagine. If I can, if I can, okay, here's, here's, here's a thing. If I could somehow maneuver the party into hiring an NPC to, like, investigate, right? To investigate this guy, right? And then they send the NPC to investigate this guy, and the NPC comes back and is like, yeah, look, I found out all this really cool stuff. The guy's name is, and a fucking crossbow bolt straight through the, the center of the head. And, <laughs> clunk. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's got juice to it. Now I'll, I'll I'll think it out more thoroughly than that. But ooh, that's got juice to it. That's got there's something there. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But this is more than that, right? 
that would just be protecting your identity. This is like a crossbow bolt flies into the guy's head from out of nowhere, and through the doorway steps the guy you are asking about who has been tailing him back to you, and he goes, sorry, I prefer to introduce myself. I'm blank, right? This isn't, this isn't just like, oh, you're not allowed to know that. It's cockiness. It's, it's like, yeah, I'll put myself right in front of you. What are you going to do about it? I can fuck you all up. I can fuck you all up. And I've got friends. <sighs> so, okay. So how would I play that? I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really invested in thinking through that situation, though. I guess, I guess my characters would have to make some kind of check to determine that the crossbow bolt did not come from the guy who just walked in the room. The angle's off. I'm, I'm f wholesale stealing this. It's, it's just in my game now. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Holy fucking you're, crap. You call that my introduction, Yusuke Yurameshi. He's the leader. He He's the leader. Oh shit, oh shit. Alarm bells, alarm bells, flashing lights. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What song is that? Oh, it's uh, an Anamanaguchi song. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, wow. And then he's gone. Wow. All right, investigation, rubber eraser, blah, blah. Hello, sniper. Yusuke didn't follow you as planned. No, he kept his cool. I was most surprised. See? Kept his cool. I was most surprised. Again, there's this. This is super subtexty. There's this like. Ah, uh, what's the word? What's the word for it? There's an almost. It's not the word I want, but I'm gonna use it anyway. So forgive me for being unclear. I'll try to to clarify. There's an almost paternal energy to Sensui, toward Yusuke. Right? Like ranged. Didn't follow you as planned. No, he kept his cool. I was most surprised. See No, he kept his cool. I was most surprised. It's like I expected him to act like a, a, a reckless child. He's he's more of an a, a worthy adversary than I expected, and I'm almost proud of that. I don't know where I get this this like idea, but it I feel it. And that's why it's hard, so hard to put into words, because it's an emotion, right? But I feel it. There's like a... There's something to it. I wonder what the fuck it is. It can't be Genkai related, because then, then it's just like, okay, you're just Tokoro, but different. So it, it can't be. I don't know. Secretly, Sensui is Yusuke's dad. Wah. I doubt it. I, I solidly doubt it. He's the reincarnated spirit of sense of mind. No, uh, no, I doubt it. But there's something. Okay, so then the seven. Black Angel. Let's dig a hole, sniper, each one of us. Seven graves will be a decent start. Let's dig a hole, sniper, each one of us. Seven graves will be a decent start. Is he just talking Yusuke, Kurama, Kuwabara, Kido, Kaito, Yanagisawa? And then... And then... Genkai? Botan? Hiei? But he, he doesn't know that Hiei is around. I, I, is that the seven? Or is it just we'll each do our part to murder everybody? I don't really understand the, te the, the subtext there. Um, uh, I want to find all the names, because I'm definitely missing one. Gourmet, Gangel, this will be a decent start. Black Angel, Gatekeeper, Sniper, Gourmet, Game Master, Doctor, and Seaman. Game Master is the one that I missed. Hey, it's a GM. Game Master. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and then he, he, like, Sniper, he was relaying the details, and Sniper called Sensui Black Angel, right? Okay, uh, I, I thought, for some reason, I thought that Black Angel was what Sniper had used to refer to, uh, uh Sensui, but I, I now, I, I step back from that, I don't think that's the case. Can I go find the frame where we see all the, the enemies, to, just to determine whether... Uh, okay, it's really hard to say because we don't see all of them the here. Uh, we do in 
at the end of the previous episode. So I'm going to jump over to 71 really quickly. Because I know we saw a full, like, shot of all of them. I'm pretty sure. No. We only... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the psychic uh, gatekeeper has to be the guy in the boat, right? Uh, uh, guy in the boat has to be gatekeeper. So that is seven. Okay. Uh, and one of them is Sniper, so Sniper's not already missing. So so he is one of the counted, one of the seven. It's not one guy with seven minions, it's seven of us. In which case, I will guess that of these, he is Black Angel. Because uh, it's the dankest name of the group, right? Like, Sniper's a pretty cool name. Seaman? Eh, sounds like a rapper. Doctor? He, he's a doctor. He's over there on the far left. We can see him in his coat. Uh, gatekeeper does what it says on the tin. He must be the guy in the boat. Uh, gourmet must be a chef of some kind. Must be somebody who cooks things. Maybe cannibalist. Maybe cannibalism. Maybe not. Who knows? Who can say? Uh, 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 game master, I will expect, is the little kid on the far left. Just gonna guess. Uh, uh, and that's, that's all of them, the dopest of them by far, and also the man who is dressed in black and has black hair and, like, darkness incarnate. It's, you know, it sounds like he's probably Black Angel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that he's Black Angel. Um, I'm also going to do something really quick. I'm just going to Google Translate Sensui. I don't think it's a word word, uh, but let me check. Diving. Diving? diving or like fountain water if you go by the kanji but i don't know the kanji of sensui's actual name because i don't i don't fucking know kanji it's too complicated for my stupid merkin brain oh lots of info but also lots of tension really cool tension building all throughout this episode you know the villain's plans start to become real and start to be in play also jesus christ that that sequence i want to see that scene of of genkai freaking mind palacing her way through uh uh this whole thing i mean it's it's just a storyboard with a looped background right loop 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 and we we loop it faster loop 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 and then we switch it to to schmears Ooh, we actually fade the schmears over is what we do so we've got the same the same loop of like coherent uh, line art, and then we're smearing over it, and then we fade all the way to the smears, and it's so sick. That's so cool. I like it a lot. Bum bum bum. Doctor is watching. Oh yeah, we also see more of the whole squad. So those that have been revealed to us, I assume, are Gatekeeper, Doctor, uh. Sniper and Sensui. Black Angel. Unless Black Angel is the fucking girl off on the far right or something. I don't know. I'm gonna assume that Sensui is the coolest name. It's the coolest name. You gotta give you gotta give your main villain the coolest name. You can't you can't have have villain Jim ordering his minions Borog the Destroyer and Gormoth the Annihilator around. Like, no, you gotta have Gorgoth, Goroth the Annihilator be the villain. That's how it works, man. This is narrative. No, you can do whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter. Jim is a terrifying villain name. I mean, seriously, you know, when you go up against Goroth the Annihilator, you know what to expect. He's gonna be big. He's gonna have some big weapons. He's gonna annihilate you. It's what he does. You go up against Jim and you don't know what to expect. He could just be a person. He could also be fucking insane. <laughs> you never know. Um, awesome. I like this episode. It's cool. It feels like the story is moving. It also feels like we've... How do I put this? We've bridged a gap between reactivity and proactivity in our protagonists. Um, our protagonists are action heroes. They are necessarily reactive. Uh, uh, Yusuke is pretty generally okay with the state of things until something fucks stuff up and he wants to fix it. 
um, Yusuke would just go to school and flirt with Keiko and and get in get in fights that he can easily win because he's, it's too easy now. And then maybe something else happens. Maybe maybe a few years in the future, Yusuke gets his own motivation. That's like I want to find people to fight that are more fighty. Um, but for now, if nothing else happens in world, Yusuke goes home. Yusuke chills with with mom. Yusuke chills with Kuwabara. Yusuke goes to school. Doesn't like school. Yusuke skips school. Keiko smacks Yusuke for skipping school. Yusuke pinches Keiko's butt. Yada yada. The the classic shit that we all get up to, right? But instead, we've got world altering stakes. Got got bad juju happening, and so Yusuke has to do stuff. Reactive protagonist. We also have this element of we don't know enough to react, therefore we must be proactive in our search for information. And there's a cool gap bridging there that I think is worth mentioning if not investigating further. Uh, awesome. I like this episode. It's cool. Let's watch the next episode. It'll probably be cool too. Wow. Uh, I'm going to take a breaky thingy, do a sinky thingy, be back blah, 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 in a second for episode 73 of Yu Yu Hakusho. See you in a moment. Peace. All right. Welcome back. We're good to go for episode 73. So let's do that. Beep beep timer. Donk. Recruited? Recruited? Forced. Doctor. Doctor, doctor. Call the amber lamps. Well, that's not spooky at all. Only if they look like those outlines. <sighs> Shit. Speaking of, welcome to a territory. What are the rules? What are the rules?
Mm hmm. Hmm. Maybe. What if they can shoot you from 500? Was that sniper? I'm pretty sure that was sniper at the at the window. Uh oh. What's it gonna do? Never smash it, always keep a specimen so you can show the- Oh god, what the fuck. You're turning into the Hulk. You're turning into the Hulk. Get a doctor over here! That must look hilarious to people who can't see the insects. Oh, uh... Oh, well, uh... Or will they just control her, or has she already been controlled? What do you mean, ordinary people? What? <laughs> what? Okay. Usually not that many. They're pretty understaffed. <laughs> but I'm not above it. <laughs> That's a good way of responding. Yeah, let's split up. There we go. How about blow something up? In a hospital. These corridor shots are cool. Oh, fuck. Oh, he works here. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> really? Oh, fuck, what? Pressure points? Oh, no. Hey, that's useful. Oh, that's bad. That is one of the first, like, full direct human murders that we have seen. Like, full murder. I mean, it wouldn't help. Wow! Oh.
Ha, ah, good. I like how smart this villain is. He's not unintelligent. Indeed. Absolutely always. But now he gets to manipulate the flow of information. Yeah. More detective shit. Perfect. All according to plan. And Keto can't say shit. Right next to me. Right across from you. How will he slip up, though? Which would have no effect above the point in his spinal cord that he severed, but whatever! Fuck! He's letting his territory out, he can communicate! You can't. Yusuke has to figure that out, but that's just like the clone test, right? You gotta figure out a way to get one of them to reveal something. Just freeze anyone who comes close who isn't him. Well, that's not supposed to be possible. He's moving his own shadow! Ah! That's so fucking sick. Oh, that's even double sick! Say it. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Ah, I see you found me. What will you do now? Just in the nick of time. Thank God. Also, he's still losing blood, right? And none of the doctors did anything about the blood loss? Okay. Check confirmed. <laughs> I fucking love that little convo. Still my name.
Koenma, stop being so meta. Stop being so meta, Koenma. The what? Well, they're gone. I think that's worse. Or you've walked into someone else's territory. That's also a good a good point. <laughs> Ooh, there's that shot. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Ah, hello. Human or demon doesn't matter if you're evil. Well, hell. You think? Soon they will all rise as zombies. Oh. Well. Hi, Genkai. Cool angle. Fair, fair. Ooh, that is a cold expression. There goes that recklessness. Oh! Well, that was cathartic. Is that gonna... That's not gonna work. Deeply cathartic, but not gonna work. Oh, God! Oh, that's a great joke. Great joke. Into darkness. Ah! 
Ah! Great line. Wow. Wakabayashi? Wakabayashi. Uh, uh, he's doctored himself. Nah. Oh. That's pretty dumb. Chop, chop, chop. This section right here. Super unique. Ah. You about to get blasted. Huh? So can you use chemical changes to fix that shit? I don't think so. Hmm. 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 Oh, God. Okay, I thought it was moving on its own, which also would be great. I hope it does. Don't take warning shots. Ah, uh, he's got to put it back on. Oh, that's bad. Probably. Ooh, that's also a Wakabayashi cut. Like 100%, right? Yeah, 100%. That's great. Okay. Uh Ooh. So there's there's a dramatic shift in the the nature of this episode once we get Yusuke 1v1 doctor. Uh uh pretty much pretty much here-ish. Like once once Yusuke figures the thing out and we get this like face-off sequence, um there's a pretty dramatic shift in the nature of the episode. So let's back away from that, which is hard to do because it was the most awesome thing in the episode and was super fun. And let's just skim on through the whole situation. Uh, okay, so this is recap, 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 back to the place. Things are bad. Man, I feel real bad for this guy. They are, they are hard, hardcore bullying him. He's like, I just want to go home and do my boxing career, and now there are murderers, and I can hear them, and the world is ending, and I don't want any part of this. And they're like, no, man, you're going to help us. This is what you're going to do. I understand world-ending stakes. You got to do what you got to do, but... Damn, I feel kind of bad for him. Not as bad as I feel for, for Ogre, though, a.k.a. George. Not as bad as I feel for George. Poor George. Um, we do, I don't know where it was, but at some point, one of the characters says, like, Black Angel told me X, which implies that Black Angel is the leader, which implies that my previous guess that Sensui is Black Angel is probably correct. Uh, and obviously, this Doctor character is actually Seaman. No, I'm, I'm joking. Um, is that Sniper? It isn't, because Sniper has the collar things, right? Okay, cool. So I don't think that's Sniper. Uh, cause I also don't think he wears a red shirt. I think he wears a red jacket, uh, which is different. Sudden insect. That's worse than malaria. Oh, no. Uh, crazy situation. Things that I love. Uh, Yusuke doesn't immediately rush into battle. Um, and, and Genkai is proud of this. We come up with a plan as we are running, and we execute it. Unfortunately, the plan is, let's all split the party, and then just yell if, if things go wrong. What if instead of being able to yell, we end up in a territory, and can't move, and can't yell, or can't run, or something like that? 
but that's the whole point. So Keto comes in, starts talking to this nurse, and the cool thing here is, to my mind, the characters have come up with a legitimately good plan. The plan is, maybe this doctor doesn't work here. Maybe we can find some nurses and ask them to look around and find doctors that don't look familiar and don't work here. What's the problem with this plan? There's a faulty assumption at, at its core, which is that he doesn't work here. And because we focus on that possibility, it's like, that seems pretty likely. He's not a real doctor. How could a real doctor be evil, right? That's not possible. Uh, turns out he is a real doctor and is able to instantly figure out what's going on and use that to his advantage because you're fighting against an intelligent opponent whose primary goal at this moment is to maintain his cover until that goal becomes untenable, right? Because she says something that's like, why are you here? Aren't you supposed to be on the other shift? And then we get our glowy glasses, our turnaround, our smile, our flickety, 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 flick. By the way, I've severed your spine, and that prevents you from speaking. Uh, I suppose if he severed it above the uh, above a certain point. But doesn't the CNS, like, manage breathing and heart rate regardless? Like, severing someone's... I think so. I'm I'm pretty sure that somebody uh, who is paraplegic can still can still or who is quadriplegic because of a spinal in injury can still speak generally, uh, but doesn't matter super much. And I could be wrong. If you know more about um, nervous system in injuries than I do, which is pretty likely that somebody out there knows quite a bit more about nervous system injuries than I do, uh, uh, let me know what you think of the the logic behind um, Mr. Mr. Uh, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Kimia? Fully forgotten his name. Uh, Kamiya. I got it. Uh, if you, how you feel about what he's doing. Okay. And... I need to take a step back here for a second. Um, murder. Murder. Direct murder. On screen, blood flows, direct murder. Of a human being who has not engaged in combat. Because, because murdering and brutally killing people when they're in the tournament ring, in the dark tournament, there's a little bit of a difference there, right? brutally killing uh even demons who have come to watch because they're part of the audience there's an even bigger there, there's a difference there too this is just murder this is just need to cover my tracks quickest option kill the woman in front of me we haven't seen a whole lot of that in Yu Yu Hakusho I won't say that it's never happened because I, I know that we've seen characters die uh but a lot of the time, it's like the plague of demon insects infects a bunch of people and they become zombies that just kind of zombie around, right? A character, human character, actively killing somebody for their own goals is, is a bit darker. I like it. I particularly like it because it sets a tone. It sets the stakes. If the stakes are the world ending, then we don't have time to save everybody then then we just have to take these losses when they happen and try to stop the bigger thing. That's real rough. Okay, full murder, keto bad juju. Uh, it, what, if only keto had realized he could use his, his ability right now and then just anchored this doctor in place, right? Ding, you're not going anywhere. Fuck, that would have been helpful as helpful as fuck, Keto. Super helpful. So, slit the wrist, let you bleed out. Uh-oh, another nurse is here. Change of plans. Someone's pretending to be a doctor. Oh no. Which immediately removes any suspicion from him. And we get our detective scene. This is so fucking cool. Sherlock Holmes walks into a room. There is a dying boy on the floor and a bunch of doctors around him. I don't know what, what happened, says each doctor in turn. How could this be possible? There must be an imposter here, says each doctor in turn. We all know each other. Where's the imposter? What does Sherlock Holmes do? That's fucking dope. This is detective shit. This is detective shit. It's detective shit. You, you, Hakusho, ghost detective. Spirit detective, not spirit punchy gun boy, right? Spirit detective. 
not Punchy Gun Boy. It's so great. I, it, it's just nice to get a little bit of, of a different type of storytelling and to have it be done pretty well. Uh, uh, it's, kind of, it's also kind of like a game of mafia, you know? And one of us is actually a mafia. I got to say, Kido's uh, uh, ability to use his territory to communicate with Yusuke is super dope. And his use of his own shadow to scrawl in his own blood, which apparently all the doctors can see, which is fucking crazy, is also super dope. And he writes out Kamiya. And hello. Everyone looks at Kamiya. Kamiya slashes everybody to pieces because murder. It's easy. Some really cool like flailing with the arm here. Not Wakabayashi, I don't think. But there are a number of cuts in the episode that I think are Wakabayashi. Regardless, the fight is super dope. It's super, super slick, man. Uh, okay, so this whole thing happens and it's like calling other people by their name, but not calling Oni by his name. And then the joke is, have you done anything useful, Oni? And I guess not. Shit, man. He was there for the whole dark tournament, though. Okay, stuff with bugs. Bugs are spooky. Feeling feels. Can we just... I, I know that I mentioned it when we saw it in the preview, but can we just, like, take a second to soak up this shot right here? Just just in this moment where, where our dark, tall, thin figure aligns with the bright white sun in the deep red sky on a background, a cityscape of blue skyscrapers... Can, can we just look at this for a moment and go, whoa, because that's trippy and super interesting and super cool. It's super cool. Um, okay. Uh, oh, there was something that I wanted to talk about during that whole, like, Koenma bit, which is the, the little meta element about, like, villains and heroes. Scalpel, virus bug. As much as I'm rooting for humanity's survival... You've got to respect a good villain. Psychic scalpel, virus bugs. He's stacked. He's stacked. This guy's got it going on. And Oni's like, no, I'm a purist. Heroes only. And uh, uh, just these casual conversations about meta content. Really funny. Uh, quite quite humorous from Togashi. I, I dig. I dig. I dig real good. Okay, so girls wander in. Uh, the other squad is on the way. Genkai is fighting, battling, fighting, fighting, battling. Uh, and there are some some cool cuts of her fighting, battling, fighting, battling, battling, but mostly just jumping around. Uh, and then it begins. This face from Yusuke is scary. Right? Ah. Enemy detected. Not, I'm gonna punch close to your face and knock you back a little bit and fuck with you. Not anything else. You do, you quite possibly have effectively killed this nurse. You tried to kill Keto. You just killed a bunch of doctors. You're not leaving here. Will Yusuke kill? I don't know. I don't know. That's the question that's posed to us by the narrator at the end. I don't know. He may have to. I, I don't think it's an unreasonable expectation that if we are in a darker narrative arc, Yusuke may be forced to kill. That we are out of the, the days of, ah, uh, yeah, fight a squad of people in the tournament arc and beat them down, but then you find out that really they were all in this for each other, and they kind of follow us around and make, make witty quotes about, uh, about our future progress in the tournament. We might be out of that level of... of uh, investment here we might we might be into blood it might be necessary Ooh. Ooh. i just had a thought what if that's the point what if that's part of the point this is again a thing that's somewhat similar with toguro maybe and i could be totally wrong i'm, I'm guessing at sensui's motivations i don't fucking know but toguro wanted Yusuke to make the same choice that Toguro made, right? Ultimate power for your humanity. Power above all. What if, what if Sensui's goal is to try to corner and force Yusuke psychologically, force him to give up his own principles in order to something? Hmm. 
most most obvious or most easy easily jumping to my mind would be like in order to force him to to demonstrate as a character study that Sensui's own path and own own whatever descent into darkness he went through is valid. Because Yusuke, you made the same choices, right? Ha ha ha. I cornered you and you did the same thing. This is what humans are. This is human nature and you're just one of them. Ha ha. Don't you want to transcend that like me? Something like that, maybe. Okay. Uh, multiple running cuts and uh, run cycles that I think are super dope. Uh, this sequence, I guess it's not Wakabayashi. I'm looking at it and it doesn't look like it. Uh, not this sequence, at least. This does because of the cartoonish angle, but I don't think it is. Um, and man, we get a cathartic full attack rush. Super cool. Uh... Again, I, I, the best word for it is fully cathartic. And then we get the attack rush from the perspective of the dock, which is something that I, I... I was about to say I've never seen it. I have seen it, and it almost never works. Uh, but this works. And I think the reason it works is because there's a clear flow of momentum as our camera, the doctor's head, is battered this way and that. There's a flow of, like... Head goes up, fist comes down, head goes down, fist comes up, head goes up, right? Like, there's a, a, a co co consistency to it, even though it's a bunch of flashy frames. Like, if you actually watch the sequence, it's just like... <laughs> but luckily, we, humans are able to, to mash that shit together in our brains and be like, this happened, uh, and get a coherent idea of what happened, even though the individual frames aren't coherent. Wait, isn't that just what animation is in general? Yeah, it is. Um... So that's pretty cool. Love the little kip up that he does. He's like, I'm alive. It's, it's cool. He's kind of vampire-ish, kind of werewolf-ish. Um, kind of reminds me, again, we're in comparative analysis here, but kind of reminds me of Alexander Anderson in Helsing. Uh, in uh, Part of that is the, the like long coat, obviously, but part of it is the way that he like holds his arms out. Uh, like, like Anderson is busted mentally, psychologically fucked. Uh, uh, Alexander Anderson is not a sane person. But he, like, he's the hunter, right? Like, the, the, the Count, the vampire, is the evil entity. But Alexander Anderson is the hunter. And this guy styles himself to be a hunter. Like, his, his scalpel things are almost claws, right? He, he's got this, like, werewolfy vibe to him. None of, not, like, bulking out or getting hairy or anything like that. Just a werewolfy kind of creepy vibe. It's really cool. Okay, um, this scene as he bounces away and turns and runs, I think is super cool. And his flip around and the, the whole running thing that he does. We switch over to Yusuke. I love this run cycle. It's super intense, I think. Uh, uh, part of that is like the, the back of his coat and the way that his like slightly padded shoulders of his jacket bounce. And part of it is the way that this fist in the foreground like really, really comes into play and is very like foreshortened, you know? So there's, there's a lot of... Instead of... When you look at a character running from the side they're just moving in one plane. When you look at a character moving straight towards you, they're just moving in one plane, right? They're just they're just actually going like this and then moving closer to you. But when you look at a character with the camera locked on the character, so we're not moving away from him or closer to him. He's not moving closer to the camera. When you when you look at him from this kind of an angle, this sort of like almost like 45 degrees ish, uh, you get all of this dynamicness of the shot. So this is, I think this is a combination of good character animation because it requires good character animation to have a character running like this and make it look legitimate. Uh, good character animation, but more importantly, intelligent framing. Like, how do we frame this shot? Well, we frame it so that it's dynamic. And that takes what could be a very bland sequence of bad guy runs through hallway, Yusuke runs through hallway, bad guy runs through different hallway, Yusuke runs through that hallway, bad guy... You've seen this, I'm sh I am I'm sh I swear, you've seen this in old movies. Uh, there will be, like, chase sequences, and they're f fucking boring, because you just have one camera shot, and, like, a character runs through the scene, and then you wait a second, and then the other character runs through the scene, and then we cut to a new scene, and the character runs through the scene, and then the other character... And it's like, I don't know... Right? Get the stop it. But this, this makes the scenes dynamic, and that's really 
Fuck you, VLC. Why did you break right now? We had we had a good run going, VLC. We had a good run together. Uh, let me end task on VLC and open the episode again. Fuck. Sorry, it's a little bit of goblin coming out. Uh, okay. So cool stuff, cool fights. Cool fights, cool stuff. It's past this. We're past this. We find out who Seaman is, which I didn't mention, but that's good. Yusuke, start fighting. Okay, so then we get Genkai's cuts, and then we get this sequence, and we get our face off, and then we beat the fuck out of him, and it doesn't work. And he gets back up, and he runs away, and then we chase him for a while. But every scene that we chase him through is dynamic and interesting and different. Except, except this one, which is just the same hallway. Until it becomes dark. Until it becomes a trap. Until we choose our direction. Ha ha ha! Super sick rotating shot. Super cool chop around in a spiral. I'm pretty sure that's Wakabayashi. Don't know who this one is. But this one with all the blending and the warping and the fucking this sequence where we drop to a hand-to-hand, -hand, Yusuke drops, Yusuke kips up, flailing out with blades, flipping over each other, active dynamic camera. Who else? I'm, I'm sure there are m many people who could be else. Um, I'm going to try to do something that I haven't been done doing before. Uh, uh... Which is, I'll actually tell you in a sec if I know that it works. Plus source colon hashtag episode number. Ah! Oh. Uh, I found the whole sequence that I thought was Wakabayashi. It is credited to Masayuki Yoshihara. How useful. Uh, it is the, this whole fight sequence is credited uh, from the moment that, uh, uh, that our Dokta drops from the ceiling. Um, so from, from here on through the whole background animated sweeping warpy wavy battle sequence, this is all that guy. So who that guy? Who Masayuki Yoshihara? What are you about? Ghost in the Shell series, Yu Yu Hakusho, two cuts on Yu Yu Hakusho, bunch of presumed, come the dragon. Uh, uh, okay, a bunch more cuts on Yu Yu Hakusho than I thought. Um, um, one of the really cute, one of the really cute jewelry cuts where she was like a little, little girl with like the big tears. That cut was Maki, Masayuki Yoshihara, which does help me put this together because like there's a, a flowiness, warpiness to the animation. It's not quite squash and stretch. It's more emotional than that. Uh, and it's super dope. Anyway, wha-bam! And then we blast off his arm, which is wha-bam! And he's fully cocky and confident the entire time. I just want to point something something small out uh, because I fucking think it's really cool. Um, when, when, you, when you furrow your eyebrows, generally you'll get like one line in the center you'll get more as as you age as you get older but you'll get like one line in the center and then the the furrowing process if you're angry it furrows this part together the muscle pushes this part together but then it squishes this part this way so generally you get folds like more vertically than than like multiple folds horizontally when you're angry when you're like like this when you've got your eyebrows up they'll come together horizontally it's a different different pair of muscles right uh uh these characters, what we get are these like multiple defined, angled, almost like check marks, sideways check marks, uh, that create their furrowed brows with like the darkness under the eyes. And it just creates a really cool effect. Also, it's super duper noticeable because he does this weird shit, which honestly, it looks like there's something living, like crawling underneath his skin, and like a little face burster is gonna come out and go, uh, which is disgusting. Um, and then Yusuke, his, his crinkles happen in a place where crinkles don't happen. They happen down here on his nose, which is super, super interesting. Uh, but it, it doesn't really matter. What it does is just create a, like, focal point between the eyes that's anger and, like, 
determination and stuff, you know, because because nose crinkles crinkle uh, symmetrically in the center. You can you can probably see that when you crinkle your nose that it crinkles symmetrically in the center like that. So it's it's interesting to see this form of that kind of expression being done in animation. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Gosh, what a cool cut. What a boom, bam, blam, bang. Also works as a, a signal to get those boys over here. And our guy can, can attach all his own limbs. So we got a fight. We got a fight on our hands. Uh, and Doctor is our first real member of this squad. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Scary, 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 scary. Um, Cool episode. Great to see some detective shit that's actually detective shit. Super fun. Uh, glad to see that Kido and Kaito and Yanagi Sawa have been pretty smoothly integrated into the group. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, and our villains. Yes, I agree with you, Koenma. Villains all the way, baby. I mean, I, I'm of the school that, like, your villains and your heroes should be tailor-made for each other and i think that yu yu haku show and hunter hunter are, are are shows and pieces of media that do that pretty well at least once they hit their stride uh yusuke in particular is battling a lot of villains that mean something to him and i get this vibe that sense we does too but i don't know why um gosh good good villains make a good well we we talked about this before right Action heroes are genuinely are generally reactive. And so if they're reacting to the plotting and scheming and actions of the villains, the villains better have something good going on, something interesting, because that's what the heroes are going to be grappling with for the whole time. And so it needs to be not only a difficult struggle, but an interesting one for us as the audience to care about it. And so far, I am deeply interested in our villains, and that means really cool things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm solid. I'm 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 solid. I think that I'm happy with this discussion of these episodes. Uh, they seem solid to me. We're gonna wrap there. I've been Tiabu. This has been Yu Yu Hakusho episodes seventy three or seventy two and seventy three. I hope you've enjoyed them as much as I have, and I hope to catch you next week when we start off with episode seventy four and probably beat the, this doctor guy into a pulp. Um, we'll see if he dies, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we just beat the shit out of him and, well, no, because he can heal himself. Mmm. Mmm. That makes things difficult, doesn't it? What a conundrum. It's almost like it's good writing. Good job, Takashi. I'm going to wrap there. See you next week. Peace. <laughs>